7 May 2022. <clears throat> hey, thanks for tuning in to my official YouTube channel. Today is the 7th of May 2022, as the calendar showed. Make sure to subscribe to my official YouTube channel and like my official YouTube videos. In addition to that, go to my website, www.susanmeeling.com. So years ago, back in, I think it was 2014 or 2015, I had already begun my Medal of Honor art project. And I had made an attempt in Scottsdale, Arizona at a comedy club. I can't remember the name of it, but it was an open mic night. I was dealing with everything that had compiled all at the same time. And instead of really looking inward, not that I didn't look inward, but in regards of actually evaluating my emotions, because as anybody who's made satirical comments about their own experiences would know, I would guess to me, actually evaluating the situations at the time is different than actually making a sarcastic comment. So where some might think that when you make satirical comments or explain it in a way that might be considered or construed as funny, that's something that is considered, I would guesstimate in a psychological evaluation as a protective mechanism. And what I mean by that is more along the lines of preventing, you know, from actually having that emotional response. So I was raised by an individual that said crying is a weakness. And so I am the eldest to a first generation Chinese male. And so that particular factor is very different for a female, being the eldest. Being a second or a younger child to a first generation Chinese male is extremely different because whereas a male, to a degree, there is an understanding. If you are the second or whatever number of child, you don't have that level of expectations because first and foremost, you're the firstborn. Secondly, when you are the, and this is across the board in general, though there is a different capacity when it comes to the Asian culture. And so those with that background have that understanding. However, the male aspect of a first generation Chinese male is extremely different, unless you have someone who moved from an Asian area to the United States of America. So where females having whichever as doesn't have the same expectation necessarily to a degree, a first generation Chinese male having the firstborn as a female is considered as a failure. That is, it's not that it's in the DNA, it, although pun intended, it's the viewpoint. So that's just how it's been. And so even though my biological father had lived in, in orphanages and foster care later in his life, so after he was around 10 years old, he still had his early memories of, and then he earned his way back in to the family. And so because of that, there's that dueling sort of situation. So being the firstborn to a first generation Chinese male, that's my starting point. And so sure, I have been made fun of and mocked for being boring 
although that is as it is. And because of being considered as square compared to other people, um, that looming situation is very different. So those who know how my biological sister was raised or has seen in the longer term, there is a massively distinctive difference. So where, yes, I have a more masculine hairstyle, although feminine-ish in certain ways, there is that factor. And it is a reality. Those who have moms that are Asian and possibly whatever other ethnic background for this particular reference, whether they are a male or a female, they are still held to certain standards, just not to the same. So those who have an Asian father and are the firstborn, whether male or female, they are still held to high standards. However, males, ironically, are not held to as high of standards as a female firstborn. Because as a male, you are capable to get away with certain things because of the societal norms. That is, unless you're LGBTQP. Not to the same level, though there is that similarity when it comes to the Asian culture. Then, additionally, um, you have the factors of being a female. And so where a male doesn't ever have to worry about certain things biologically that a female does, that is the facts. And so when you take that into consideration where other people have viewed certain ethnic backgrounds a certain way, this is the reality. So my biological father's father, who would be my agong, I met him only once when I was a child. And because of certain factors that had occurred, it didn't go so well. And um, it was as it was from what I was informed of. I don't actually really remember it because I had a head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000. So I remember my bakung and my bakpu, which <laughs> that's a whole other level. So my father, biologically, his father was born in China and had been brought over to the United States of America with my bakung and my bakpu. They had escaped Mao Zedong. And so my Bakong was full Cantonese and my Bakpu was half Cantonese and half Mandarin. And they had my biological father's father as their son. My Bakpu did not have her daughter because of situations that had occurred in China not because she had a daughter, there were just certain problems that had occurred in China before Mao Zedong had taken power. And so, um, my Bakung had fallen for my Bakpu and they had a child and it was as it was. So I was raised ironically a bit differently by my bakung and my bakpu compared to my biological sister because there were certain attributes that my bakpu could recognize not just in my personality as a child though also because of how she could see how I was going to grow up. And not just in the personality aspects, but facial features. And so she had recognized certain things from her daughter. And it was as it was. So, um, 
being the firstborn and not a male. In the 1980s and 1990s, in the state of New Jersey, on top of that, um, it's a very different upbringing. You, you don't have the, the same um, community when you are half Chinese. And if you don't look Asian, then there's that as well. Because even though to a degree in my childhood there are some attributes, it was known how my physical features were going to go facially. So I also wasn't allowed to go to Chinese school. On top of that, my biological mother and biological father wouldn't allow that. Also because my bakum and my bakpu wouldn't allow it either. So my biological sister, she actually looks Asian, though I have the Asian name, Mi Lin. And so that has to do with her daughter's name. And so um, that is as it is, as far as that's concerned. And so my biological mother made the choice that she made when it came to my biological sister in comparison, and um, it went as it went. So we did not have the same upbringing for a multitude of reasons. Partially, yeah, because my biological mother had denied my biological sister the connection to my buck poo because of the name choice. And so it went as it went. In turn, though, because of being the firstborn to a first generation Chinese male, and those who understand the extremely distinctive differences between Cantonese and Mandarin, um, my bug gong being extremely Cantonese because of only being Cantonese, and then my bakpu being half Cantonese and half Mandarin, there's a different set of standards. So in America, the closest you could understand is Cantonese is considered the upper elite of individuals, and Mandarin can be low to middle class. So, I am the firstborn. And so that might make a little bit more sense to those who knew me in person, face to face in person, despite certain factors. And life was as life was and went as it went. And so, had my head injury during basic training and I woke up in the state of Texas and <clears throat> had a subarachnoid hemorrhage in the frontal lobe of my brain that took eight and a half years to fully dissipate. By the time of having moved to Carrollton, Texas, I had only a few more months before the next MRI and CAT scan would show just a little bit more before the next one that would show the MRI CAT scans where the subarachnoid hemorrhage in the frontal lobe of my brain would be completely clear. So while there were individuals who had their opinions regarding my hairstyle and hair color, as well as my tattoos, that's what the situations were. And the proof is the proof regarding that. If you do not have understanding regarding certain types of temples in regards of China, Maybe there's a pop culture reference that you can take in consideration 
for certain factors. And so there are legends about my Bakku for some of the work she had done and protected the areas of. I don't know if there's any books or movies or television shows that would go into that. However, that is as it is. So I look as I do. And it is as it is. Um, I have brought up my background regarding Marine and Science Technology School with the Navy attachment, as well as going to the oceanic waters along the New Jersey coastline, as well as New York State coastline as a child. And uh, so, you know, I earned 26 scuba diving certifications and I assisted keeping certain areas clear in the areas of the state of Texas, the Gulf of Mexico, and the Atlantic area of the ocean. Not just in the New Jersey and New York City coastline area, though also out from Boca and the Florida Keys. My son, my daughter, and my niece, <clears throat> when we went on a dolphin excursion, they may have seen something regarding a very brief situation compared to because of the circumstances. And so, um, then there was the Vandenberg scuba dive the next day. And so, um, then I returned back to the state of Texas after a few things. And those situations went the way those situations went. My daughter, being in the knowledge that I am as I am and having wanted to make sure my daughter actually understood she could grow and, and not have to rely on certain things. That is a stereotype at those times. Uh, my daughter and my son were attending McCoy Elementary School and she had her hairstyle similar to mine. I had made attempts to explain to her that having a short hairstyle is not easy being a female. And where my son had certain similarities because of his grades, being at a rate where I would allow him to have a mohawk for a short amount of time, a very small mohawk in comparison, um, that particular area of the state of Texas had been as they had been. And the proof is as the proof is. So from that time frame through to 2012 into 2013, the situations were as proven and clarified. And so 2013, after the Stoney LaRue concert in March of 2013, my son and I wound up in Arizona after the San Antonio family court case and a few other situations. And I had made attempts to deal with certain things because unlike most people who are active duty National Guard or reservist, including veteran, I have a blue ID card of and for the Armed Forces of the United States of America. So for those who understand Marine and Science Technology School with the Navy attachment and being invited in comparison to applying, 
difference regarding that. And then there's my clearance at the age of 17. And okay, I didn't graduate basic training. I acknowledged that. Um, those situations are different for someone such as myself compared to others that have a, a different luxury, if those understand. And so, you know, dealing with what I had to deal with as best as I could, despite certain situations, I did the best that I could. So I went to this open mic comedy club a few times, and I made attempts to deal with a few things as best as I could. And um, while some people, you know, I mean, I guess I got a few um, people to laugh at that point in time, I made a few attempts in the Portland, Oregon area as well. And then later in 2000, and that was in 2014, and then later in 2015, I was up in Seattle at a downtown Seattle location. And at this location, a female named Rebecca Schrader had spoken with me outside of the open mic comedy club. And she went up before I did and I made it, instead of utilizing my time to actually um, work on what I was working on, I had clarified a few things because I could tell she was nervous and it was as it was. It went the way it did. And we had met afterwards and it's 2015 at that time. I'm above the Mason-Dixon line. I'm not in any location that I would actually recognize because I hadn't ever been in Washington State before. The Botany is similar to New Jersey and New York State and Pennsylvania and dealing with the after effects of my head injury from Palm Sunday in 2000 in conjunction with my scuba diving situations during and after the situations regarding my daughter, my son and I, and then Irving on top of that in 2011 if that just so happens to be the same Rebecca Schrader from the Fort Worth Zoo situation in reference to my daughter, I didn't ever see what she looked like in Texas. I have absolutely no actual clarifications because that would have to be in person, face to face in person to have that clarification in comparison to online factors. However, in various areas, I had explained to people in person, face to face in person, what I was dealing with. Also online, because I was seeking assistance because I knew my daughter, my son and I could not be the only ones having dealt with that particular situation. And at those times, what was available in comparison was what it was. So, um, if that just so happens to be the exact same female, well, it's 2022 in May on the 7th, and I just really thought about that. I mean, I know I put together the modern day book. If you go to my website, www.susanmealing.com, look around. Uh, that particular reality would not be something I would ever officially know because I didn't ever officially get introduced to uh, Sarah Brown or Marcy Cremens or Rebecca Schrader. There wasn't a point in time where McCoy Elementary School introduced me to those three females or their spouses or their children at all. There wasn't that at any point in time. Additionally, I did not go to the PTA meetings. 
so I wouldn't have had that experience either. And again, I had a head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000. It took eight and a half years for that subarachnoid hemorrhage in the frontal lobe of my brain to dissipate after having woken up from my coma. And I deal with headaches and migraines, memory deficits and cognitive disorders. And so wouldn't actually know officially. However, there are those hypotheticals, which people in the DFW area and Austin area and San Antonio area would know who I spoke with in person, face to face in person, as well as in regards to the online factors because of seeking assistance for my daughter, my son and I in the correct ways, not in the assumed ways in what would actually be correct because of the correct aspects instead of assumptions. And so while the possibilities of could have been, again, I wouldn't know because I was born and raised in New Jersey and grew up going to New York as well as Pennsylvania. So the names Sarah and Marcy and Rebecca kinda are common names in a multitude of areas as well as the population. So if the only assumptions of who I personally knew because of that aspect of Carrollton, Texas compared to the population of the Tri Township area in New Jersey that had the largest commuters numbers to the World Trade Center, World Trade Center Plaza, as well as my biological father's business to the five boroughs, as well as Pittsburgh and Philadelphia and different areas in New Jersey uh, without the yearbook sort of situation, you wouldn't ever know the amount of people I actually knew with the names Sarah or Marcia or Marcy or Rebecca. It's really common names. Then as far as last names, well, there's Brown, and then there's Cremens, which, okay, and then there's Schrader. Why don't you, at that point, ask me if I knew anybody with the last name that had Berg or Stein involved with their name somewhere? It's kind of a common sense aspect in the tri-state area, and I don't know what other people have had. Well, yes, I was in the Army, and yes, I did get invited to Marine and Science Technology School with the Navy attachment. I did not graduate basic training, and the amount of people that were in my basic training, I only remember three last names. Two of them are drill sergeants at the time. That's it. Any other name is from medical hold unit when I was stationed there. So I don't know what the assumption is in reference to the tri-state area, but most people don't run around introducing with their first and middle and last name or first and last name Usually it's either just their first name, possibly if they go by their first and middle name, and or their first and last name, or the possibility of Mr., Miss, or Mrs., whatever the last name, in comparison to the state of Texas. And so if the assumption in that hypothetical as to if one of and or the other two of those three in the vicinity 
of the comedy club in Seattle te uh, from Texas. Well, then that kind of lets you know regarding the situations that I informed people about that I was dealing with in reference to my daughter, my son, and I. Because if they had anything to do with the Stony LaRue concert in March of 2013 and or any of the needless drama that occurred in any area, whether in scuba diving and or the DFW area and or the Austin area and or the San Antonio area, I wouldn't know officially. So you can take that in consideration as to Seattle, Washington. So a bit of a distance from the state of Texas by a couple of miles through a few states. And so then additionally in reference to my Medal of Honor art project trips. So if those females thought that highly of themselves, that I would be capable to distinguish them in person, face to face in person, in comparison. I don't know what they know about headaches and or migraines and or cognitive disorders, uh, but I would think that'd be common sense that if you just have whatever as far as you, you don't, have the same, um, I mean, I guess it depends on what their physical look would be. If it was something distinguishable or what have you. But that also lets you know yet again that my son, my daughter and I had dealt with what we had dealt with because of their failures due to the Fort Worth Zoo situation and throughout the state of Texas would know. So would the situations in Arizona and Washington State, as well as during my Medal of Honor art project trips. So I believe that would be stalking and harassment by legal definition. Believe that it's a federal crime across state lines, and then there's the contributing to the delinquency of a minor, endangerment of a minor, twice, per child, per situation, and then the fact that I'm considered disabled because of being medically retired from the Army. I'm actually considered that. And so even though other factors, I haven't denied that. So that lets individuals know in reference to any hypotheticals at all regarding to that level of those situations that I brought forward all those years ago. And so I made attempts to explain and in 2019 through 2022, yes, I've been working on my updates regarding my journal blog, The Ornery PSA, through my website, www.susanmeeling.com. That lets you know if that's accurate regarding a leaky beach, all those other factors as to what those individuals might think as to whatever their opinions would be in comparison to what I've dealt with. So while some people, maybe they could have had something to do with the Guardian Asshole Show, yet that would not fix or repair what occurred regarding my daughter, my son, and I as a family that would not fix or repair the situations regarding my scuba diving. That would not fix or repair the different communities that I had been a part of if any of those people were involved with any of that needless drama 
in the state of Texas or Arizona or Washington State. That also additionally would not fix or repair what occurred regarding in those hypotheticals of my Medal of Honor art project and trips thereof. That also would not fix or repair anything in reference to 2019 or 2020 or 2021. Maybe for other people regarding that, but in my particular reference, that would not fix or repair anything for me, in my opinion. That would not fix or repair anything for my son and or my daughter and or I as our family. That would not fix or repair the situation as to the hypothetical needless drama regarding those who were considered as acquaintances and or friends and or as family and or any dating relationships and or engagements that I had as far as the male that I had been engaged to twice to. I wouldn't fix or repair those, though they would have clarifications. It would not fix or repair the damages from those times. See, once you know, you cannot unknow. And so, again, it also wouldn't fix or repair the time that cannot be gotten back. So, you know, while some might think the pop culture aspect in comparison to who I am, because while some people I have known, the majority is the reality, I did not grow up with pop culture. I was not allowed that. So it would actually be the opposite of doing that. So where everybody else had whatever allowances they had, I was not allowed to watch movies above a G rated. And so it would actually, in reference to the hypotheticals of involvement regarding guardian assholes, it would just be another needless problem to someone such as myself, because despite how I physically look, I don't have that background as to whatever the assumptions could be. And so it wouldn't actually do anything in the positive way as to my personal viewpoint. So yes, well, I have done modeling. That's not the same. And there were different reasons in comparison. Yes, I have done performances. Again, not the same. And so if in that hypothetical regarding those three and or whoever involved with what would be considered as pop culture to someone such as myself, there's not that similarity of understanding. I don't have that knowledge base. Again, the few movies I watched as a child that I can remember are, ironically, Disney movies and then the cartoon version of Robin Hood and then Sailor Moon. I didn't really watch many television shows that had human beings in the television screen other than Bill Nye, the science guy, and Reading Rainbow. That was it. That was my main stuff that would be considered as pop culture from my childhood. That'd be it. So I'd literally only have, as far as human beings that I saw with my own eyes regarding televisions, that would be Bill Nye the Science Guy, and then how Reading Rainbow went. Otherwise, 
when I would listen to the news, I would be doing my homework at the same time or coding or working on stuff. So it was more similar to the radio, even though it was a television in comparison. So pop culture references really don't have many. So I was a very active child, so I liked sports. I mean, sure, I'd watch a few games here and there, but anybody who's ever played sports, as they would know, usually you kind of get a little amped up and a little into the game, a little, you know, it, it, for an example of the Super Bowl, when Justin Timberlake and Janet Jackson performed at the halftime show, those individuals would have a fairly good idea why I didn't really watch many sports as a biological adult. So, for those who don't know, um, I had played football with some friends of mine as a child. Not on a team, just, you know, throwing around the pigskin. And then, um, played hockey, you know, street hockey, roller hockey, and ice hockey with some friends. And so my favorite teams, and, and then you have to take this in consideration because it's the 1980s and 1990s, my favorite sport to watch was hockey, the 1980s and 1990s. And I liked both the New Jersey Devils, and the Rangers. Don't think some, so some people may have to think about, especially in the 1980s, 1990s version of hockey. That's, they still have hockey, but there's a bit of a difference. And maybe there is something that could be noticed to which one of the two were my favorite. Though it really doesn't matter because both of them have red in their, you know, and so, you know. But yes, in the 1980s and 1990s, I liked both hockey teams of the New Jersey Devils and the New York Rangers. So, you can just think about that. And yes, in Texas, there's not that understanding, unless you are from New Jersey, or New York City area, or Pennsylvania, just the tri-state area overall, unless you're from there, and then live in Texas, from the 1980s and 1990s most specifically, if not, you'd have to, at min minimum, go to college for four to six years if you didn't go to high school with college in that tri-state area, specifically in the 1980s and 1990s. And so, that's, so, so that's the only way you could truly understand how certain so there are those in Texas who understand football remember let me give this as a satirical viewpoint so in football you have all of these pads and then you have cleats the cleats yes they have some metal sometimes but you have you know it is this it is and you have a helmet where you, you have a ball that has a, you know, shape. <laughs> and you run on the ground with grass. In hockey, you slide around on metal blades and it is considered fun. <laughs> sure, you have pads and helmets. So while you are on these metal blades, 
that are quite sharp. Mm -hmm. You also are given a stick. <laughs> it's a funny shaped stick. So if you put leather into a freezer, it gets harder. So just think of a condensed, uninflated foot, much smaller and extremely compact piece of plastic sliding around on ice while groups of guys running around on not on cleats. No, on metal blades. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With sticks. <laughs> that's fun. That's that's fun. Mm -hmm. Little bit of a different mentality. By a lot. So for civilian recreational scuba divers, if you need an understanding of a difference between when I clarify as to civilian recreational scuba diver type of, you, you, you can have the reference of peewee football, okay? <laughs> well, by the time I got involved with scuba diving, earning my 26 scuba diving certifications, I had already defended in the tri-state area, liking both the New Jersey Devil hockey team and the New York Ranger hockey team, while additionally playing with friends. So you know, in the 1980s and 1990s, for an on land above sea level, reference point to understand the difference between how you view certain aspects regarding fresh water and our oceanic water, depending where you go. Sure, I can appreciate stuff. However, <laughs> for those who do not scuba dive and or who do, there is a bit of a difference in communication as far as certain factors are concerned. Because we're civilian recreational scuba divers. We'd be like, oh, look at the pretty coral. Look at the pretty fishy fishies. I can do that. And yet, I have a smidgen of a different background. And I have some upbringing that I have had. So yes, I can see when I have the time, those pretty coral reefs and those pretty little fishy fishies. However, if you take in consideration hockey compared to peewee football, there's a bit of a difference. Maybe some can understand now. So, you know, for those, and, and it is a perfect reference because all those civilian recreational scuba divers made fun of me for my scuba knives. Well, what's the difference between my scuba knives and hockey compared to peewee football? I think that metaphor might make a bit more sense at this point in time. Mm -hmm. So I did some work. Mm -hmm. Handled clearing out some stuff by myself. You know, I 
written a few books. Updated my journal blog, Lord Nui PSA, on my website, www.susanneewing.com. And you know, so sure, I could make a satirical aspect of that. Though this might also make sense why I earned 26 scuba diving certifications. More so in regards of practice before going in the ocean with my scuba dive gear. I could justify it, you know. So, practice makes perfect. Is a saying, I'm fairly certain. And so, you know, it is as it is. A little bit of a difference. By a smidgen, a little teeny tiny bit between civilian recreational scuba diving. And they could be upset about my part. However, you know, um, in this lecture, compared to if they were to truthfully think about it, that might be a smidgen of a very good metaphor as to the difference regarding, you know, hypotheticals, such as the Vandenberg area. And, uh, you know, a few pictures I took when I had the time. You know, so for example, um, out from Boca, you know, there's some pictures I took. And so there's this particular tree at the bottom of the ocean. And it's more like a um, blade of grass that's grown really tall for the texture, okay? Not fountain grass, really, because that's thicker. Think fescue or Kentucky blue for that soft type of grass. Except a tree in the oceanic waters for the size for that particular picture and um, the current so strong that it could stand straight up. <laughs> yeah, so it's taller than me. Mm -hmm. So then there is the picture of who I call Lob and Stir and Biff. And you know, I'm huddling underneath the coral reef area. They were a little you know, I have thought of a funny, sarcastic way to look at it. I found a Mimi where there's a military guy who has like an M80 and he's throwing it down the uh, open area and it's something along the line in the caption for that guy's an extra <laughs> New Jersey words. And so nearby just so happens to be some forming underwater volcanoes. Just saying. <laughs> I, uh, I I was listening to the Greg Gutfeld show, and um, <laughs> so I have I have a I have a I have a thing for cutie patootie me seal poopy dowdy, and a thing for cutie patootie marine, and cutie patootie marine possibly as well. could appreciate. However, you know, since Cutie Patootie Marine happens, I think he taught something about EOD. <laughs> well, <laughs> hypothetically, there could be a smidgen of a sarcastic viewpoint, and yet, at the same time, <laughs> a bit of an appreciation 
if you were to know. <laughs> because that'd be a very different way to put it. However, it's natural. And so, <laughs> literally, in the Marine Corps, maybe he's seen the ocean somewhere. I don't know how many Marines see the ocean. Somewhere. <laughs> Not just in pictures either. <laughs> but it is as it is. So yeah, yeah, that's that's just my sarcastic viewpoint. So you know, nonetheless. Went to this comedy show, open mic, and then the irony is shortly after, there was a Marine, or a guy who said he was a Marine, who went on stage, and I said, thank you for your service, and he made what comment he did, and I had reminded him that if it wasn't for the military, whatever branch, the constitutional rights and amendments of the United States of America wouldn't be what they are. It, it, it wouldn't, I mean, you still have to have it within reason, essentially if the, if you look at a condensed version, it's the 10 commandments regarding most laws, as far as the constitutional rights, as far as equality, whatever gender, whatever background. However, there is a disagreement, and so that was as it was. But yes, if that female happened to be associated with one of the three, or all three, regarding what occurred in reference to Zen having lost my daughter, when they were volunteer chaperones for my daughter's class at the Fort Worth Zoo, which was the year after my scuba diving. Um, those particular situations as to however that occurred doesn't change the facts. So similarly, when I went to Crystal Lake South, the Crystal Lake South cheerleaders didn't like the truth that at the competition there were two teams and the first place team earned, I personally think, a higher score than a 6.9, but they were given a 6.9, and Crystal Lake South was given a score which I personally thought compared to what I had seen it was a generous score of 3.2 out of two teams. Yes, by technicalities, the facts are, yes, out of Crystal Lake South in the year of 1998, went to a competition and they got second place. However, the facts are out of two teams. The facts are, that's the score. 6.9 to 3.2. So it's the facts. The cheerleading team got upset. The freshman JV and varsity teams, I should say, as to the truth. And instead of being upset at themselves as they should have been for their work or what have you, and instead of them actually working to be better, they complained and were upset. So in this hypothetical of similarities, if those three females and or connections thereof who lost my daughter during an elementary school field trip at the Fort Worth Zoo or whatever situations of, it doesn't change those facts. No matter what, no matter any aspect of, doesn't matter how I physically look, doesn't matter about my tattoos, it has nothing to do with my scuba diving in regards of in the situation. 
my involvement with modeling has nothing to do with that unless they made it their choice to do so. My performances have nothing to do with their failure to be responsible chaperones on a school field trip. That's their fault, not my fault. That's their irresponsibility, not my irresponsibility. Those three females lost my daughter in comparison. That's their fault. That's their irresponsibility. That's their lack of attention to detail. That's their problem for what they did. That's the facts. Anything they chose to do thereafter, including the law firm in reference to the school district as well, to McCoy Elementary School of Carrollton Farmers Branch Independent School District, it's not rocket science. That's their fault. That's their failure. Any needless drama that was stirred up because of the law firm and or connections of that still doesn't change the facts that they did what they did and they failed where they failed. So no matter what, doesn't matter what I wear, doesn't matter how I look, their failures remain their failures. That's just the facts. My Medal of Honor art project, artwork, intentions, my background, all that stuff doesn't mean anything. No matter what they wish, because it still doesn't change the facts that they made the choices that they made that day. That's their fault. That's their shortcomings. That's their failures. That's what they have had to accept as to where they went wrong. That's not my fault that they couldn't handle a lower number of children in the group that they were chaperoning compared to the number that I had at the zoo field trip the year before, because I had five children plus my daughter to take care of. Those three females with a total of six to nine children total, that's their irresponsibility. That's their failure. That doesn't change anything at all, nor does it change that Tammy Hatcher should have had the special needs in that aspect. Similarly, it does not change the fact that McCoy Elementary School should have had by the time of the year before in 2009, in the official capacity of tier three, in reference to my daughter's ARD. By the year of 2008, officially, they had my daughter in what would have been considered tier two, as far as the ARD and IEP. So that's their fault. So where McCoy Elementary School and staff there, uh, that's their failures of Carrollton Farmers Branch Independent School District. The different staff members along the way, that's their failures. So such as Angela Ryder and Don Rank, so on and so forth, that's their fault. However, in regards of the field trip in April of 2010, well, the other factors are as they are, that still doesn't change the fact that those three female volunteers still lost my daughter during that time frame. That doesn't change that at all. They volunteered to do so. That's their responsibility. That's their fault. If they didn't be honest, that's their fault as well. Additionally, as to the other situations, Tammy Hatcher had the available option, but she did not see a need for me to be on the field trip. I could have switched my, the situations 
but that was her fault, not mine. So repeatedly the McCoy Elementary School staff and their fault doesn't change. No matter what, it doesn't change anything. Additionally, those three females, so Sarah Brown, Marcy Cremans, and Rebecca Schrader in the year of 2010, that doesn't change their fault for their failures to acknowledge any aspect of. So then that's Carrollton Farmers Branch Independent School District's fault as well, because in the year before, around October of 2009, that's when my daughter officially was tier two going into tier three. By the time of December of 2009, by ARD and IEP Texas Education Agency standards, my daughter should have been in tier three, as far as that's concerned. Having gone to school district therapy officially puts a child in tier two to tier three. That's their fault in regards of Carrollton Farmers Branch Independent School District. The female named Summer, one of her children went to district therapy. That's an automatic regarding the Texas Education Agency. So my physical aspects, if there was the allowance for her son to be in that ARD IEP program, but my daughter, do not pretend that's not sexism, because my daughter, do not pretend it's not racism, because look at the skin tone. Not in reference to my tattoos, the skin tone difference between Summer and her son's skin tone, and my daughter and her skin tone. Now, yes, my son's skin tone is a bit lighter. It's the same biological father in comparison to whatever assumptions. If my ex-in-laws were to be looked at, it wouldn't take much to see that as far as the similarities and yet differences between my son and my daughter's biological father's family regarding their aunts and uncles. Additionally, no different than when taking a look at the physical differences between my physical features to my biological sister's physical features. So that literally shows everything that I had explained directly off the bat. However, they wanted to try to blame my hair and my tattoos. That has nothing to do with my daughter or my son's education, especially since I didn't show up to the school looking in these physical types of clothing. I wore jeans and a t-shirt. So that's, again, those types of needless problems from those types of situations to those types of assumptions in those types of hypotheticals. So if there are those particular factors, however, in whatever connected aspect of, if those people from McCoy Elementary School and or Carrollton Farmers Branch Independent School District and or the scuba diving community in the civilian recreational sector, that lets you know those factors. If anything in regards of Washington State, that proves to you additionally in each and every aspect of. So today is the 7th of May, 2022. The 6th of June, 2022, which is an irony for anybody who knows about the year of 2013 as to the 6th of June regarding the San Antonio Family Court. Well, it's nine years later. 
and there's a merger to take in consideration. So, choices of free will. So whatever has been regarding those types of hypotheticals, I have clarified and verified in the best of my capability. Journal blog, the knowledge, I have always had the knowledge regarding my books as to the differences. My website, www.susanmeeling.com. I have known the aspects as to my Medal of Honor art project, artwork. I've known my aspects in reference to creating a historical and spiritual rubbing of the spirit of the Medal of Honor award for those who needed to pay attention to those specific words. The Medal of Honor Award. Or, as you could tell, my Medal of Honor Art Work. So, what would be in this lecture a similar letter to pay attention to I'll give you a hint for this lecture. My dog was called this by shortened aspects. What would be the similarity between the word award and artwork? Two syllable words, both of them, both start with the letter A. So again, a historical and spiritual rubbing of the Medal of Honor Award. So again, not paying attention officially to the name. It's in reference to the Medal of Honor award the spiritual and historical but most importantly spiritual aspects are rubbing because of the marker to the medal of honor award regarding my art work so the modern day book might make a bit more sense regarding certain individuals as to what they have needed to pay more attention to in comparison to assumptions. I know it's another letter word that starts with A. And so, you know, I mean, it is an elementary school. I suppose I could make the joke or sarcastic comment. So, was the intention and some other aspects that I learned as a child and a teenager before my confirmation class electives. Again, my buckung and my buck poo immigrated here to escape Mao Zedong. My buckung was Cantonese. My buck poo was Cantonese and Mandarin. So maybe there's some people who have heard of some Asian somewhere, possibly having some religious or spiritual aspects, hypothetically. Maybe there's somebody somewhere who could discuss philosophy that's come out of the area, hypothetically. Maybe there's a temple somewhere 
in some Asian area. You know. I don't want to assume. You know. In comparison to some hypotheticals. So. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, if I'm accurate in regards of. Well then. That lets individuals know. That. Their choices as to those people in the state of Texas as to those situations to take in consideration. And why is it that Don Rank wanted to know about the firearm situation anyway? What did that matter in the year 2009? What was important about that? to ask out of curiosity that my ex-brother-in-law had to clarify. What would be important about that? On top of that other set of situations. I mean, realistically, if you take my type of scuba diving into consideration, why would that be important anyway? I don't know. Maybe some people are as they are. Whatever that might translate to. So, hypothetically. But again, it doesn't change that at all. So, if individuals that actually were assisting me correctly and my misunderstanding, well then my misunderstanding. I haven't ever denied those aspects of the after effects of my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000. If the intention was to actually assist my son, my daughter, and I, the intentions are important. If it was in regards of any hypothetical other intention, then that would be proven. One way or another. I have kept an open mind for a long time. I have done what I could to not assume. Because I know, as I have explained, as well as wrote about, I know my son, my daughter, and I are not the only ones that have had more than one situation going on at the same time. Maybe I'm the only one who hasn't instantly responded without any hesitation regarding posting stuff online. Maybe in that capacity, I am the only one who wasn't immediate in those references and actually took a few minutes to step back to process just to make sure, because I'm not wanting to assume. However, if that's the case, well, that's the case then intentions. They are important. And again, if the capability to just speak with me in truth, with etiquette and respect, was an aspect of, well, that's a choice. If I'm accurate. But in order for those three females, most specifically, to do so, they would have to inform me that they were one of the three females regarding my daughter's field trip to Fort Worth. Their names. Yeah, okay, yes. However, in order to actually speak with me in truth, that would have to be their starting point, would be their name and where in comparison and intentions. 
So if, in reference to that comedy club in Washington State, she did not inform me she was from Carrollton, Texas. She did not inform me that her child of whatever had attended McCoy Elementary School. She did not inform me that she had been a volunteer on the Fort Worth Zoo field trip in 2010. Just for clarification, if that just so happened to be, because let's be honest as to how that actually would have been in a different capacity because of my right. So, just a clarification in that if factor. And then what are the legal aspects regarding Homeland Security, the FBI, and etc. in reference to those people in any hypothetical connection? What would those legalities be to the proof thereof? Because obviously, I wouldn't ever consent to anything involving those people. That's what informed consent is important for in every aspect of life to that truth. So if there was any testing regarding the after effects of my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000 and or any other factors of regarding my scuba diving and or anything else, there was not any consent in the legal aspects that would be mandatory for the clarifications. As to my journal blog, The Ornery PSA, on my website, www.susanmeeling.com, as well as my writings, obviously, my writings would be capable to prove the aspects of having the clarity to distinguish the difference between my fact books and my fiction books because of the genre that I initially put them in when I listed them after copyrights because of my intellectual property rights from my background, of my experiences, of my creativity, depending on whichever aspect of, automatically that Superman comic situation. And clarifications and verifications of my journal blog, the Ornery PSA of my website, www.susanmeeling.com. my finances, not anybody else's, because I wouldn't ever sign that over, obviously. That would have to be clarified and verified, and I wouldn't ever do that. I haven't signed any paperwork on that just for a clarification as well. I wouldn't, I know better. So I've done all the work that I possibly can do. I've clarified and verified, and if anybody wishes otherwise, the clarifications and verifications as to the proof. But you know, if those intentions, so important. Thanks for tuning in to my official YouTube channel for my official YouTube videos for my work of my intellectual property from my experiences as per. Go to my website www.susanmeeling.com. You guys have a good day. Today is the 7th of May 2022.